Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. He's still here. It's September 13th and Jonas Svenningsen is still at the club. Ah, oh, me one, Svend Bonda nil. So as it happens, we didn't have a single offer for him. And I believe that's mainly down to him signing that new deal at the start of the summer. Thing is, we can't do that in every window. We'd end up paying him 100 grand of the week in like five years from now, uh, which is, well, then again, we could end up doing it anyway if he carries on at this rate. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to have to work on some other techniques to try and keep him in January and so on. But every window we get through where Jonas Fenningsen stays at the club is a chance for us to improve the club a little bit more so the ball won't want to sell him, basically. Now we've picked up a few little bits and bobs here and there, um, some ins and some outs and stuff, and played a few games off camera. And of course, we've got the Champions League group stages draw which has now happened and we'll talk about that in a minute okay so i decided to go straight to the champions league draw uh, for one simple reason is that we are not a first pot team we came in as a third pot team i know a few people said in the comments that because we'd won the europa league and we had the seventh best league uh in europe we would be a top pot team um we're not I don't know why. Maybe you don't get a place in the top pot for winning the Europa League. I, I was just going by what you guys said on that one. But I feel like top seven should get us in there because I thought it was the top seven leagues and then the winner or something got top pot. I, I don't know why. Kind of weird on that one. Uh, but Russia got a team in the top pot even though they're below us. Maybe it counts on the following year or something because we've only just moved above. I don't know. It's a weird one, that one. But most importantly, this is our group. Paris Saint-Germain, RB Leipzig and Anderlecht. So we are a pot three team at least. We've got Anderlecht home and away. And I feel like that's winnable. That's two winnable games for us. We can hopefully get six points there, which will help us in coefficients. I think RB Leipzig is a good team to get as a second pot side. We could have had much worse teams in there. Um, I think there's potential for some wins there. I think this is a group that we could get out of. Uh, maybe not as group winners with PSG in there, but I think it also gives us a good chance to keep the coefficient high enough to the next year we can definitely make ourselves a pot one team, hopefully, if it is genuinely the top seven nations, because next year we will definitely be one of them. Um, so that bodes well for the future. Today we're playing against Anderlecht, and I think we've got a game against RB Leipzig as well in there too. I can't remember what the second one is, but the first one is definitely Anderlecht, and that is today. Unfortunately, FC Copenhagen were knocked out 6-1 on aggregate by Ajax, so they've gone into the group stages of the Europa League with Orborg, uh, Lingby, and who was the other one? Uh, someone else as well. Fell at the very final... Oh, and Bromby fell at the very final hurdle uh, getting into the Europa League group stages. They were very, very close, and both of them went out on extra time, I think. Um, so they very nearly could have had four teams in the Europa League group stages, but not quite. So directly after the disappointment in the UEFA Super Cup final, we got straight back on the horse with a lovely 3-0 victory at home against AGF. Not the best in terms of chance creation, but still decent. Got some Peter Sorgord, Andre Cunha and Sane Akinola, uh, giving us a 3-0 win and a clean sheet. Very important. This was then followed with a simple 2-1 win away at Randers. We weren't great on the night again, but we got the win goals from Jonas Fenningsen and Mariana Bravo, the two lads. Sebastian Fischer got one back for Randers late on, but it wasn't enough. Another good win. We then travelled away to Esbjerg, who started off this season pretty poor defensively, and it showed. We scored three goals in the first 25 minutes. A ha uh, sorry, a pair for Bravo, one for Sonny Akinola, and then, of course, an Andres Dreyer penalty uh, got one back for Esbjerg. In the second half, we did push, but we just couldn't seem to find a fourth goal. It doesn't matter. Got the win. And finally, in our little run, we made it four wins out of four off camera uh, with a 1-0 victory treat over Midgeland. Medi Kuja with the goal. Should have been more. Doesn't matter. Got the win. Got the clean sheet. And that keeps us going nicely at the top. Top of the league now is looking like this. We've got 22 points. We're four points clear of Randers. What a start to the season. They've won six of their first eight games. Johnny E has already scored six goals for them. This Miranda guy has already got six assists. He looks like he's got something about him. What's he like as a player? Have we scouted him before? Oh my goodness me. He's a striker. Yeah, we might have to scout him up and see what he's like. He looks like a solid player. Not to sign him, because he's playing for Randers, and I'd rather keep him there. But yeah, four points clear at the top over Randers AGF. FC Copenhagen still nine points behind us and five points behind Randers and AGF. They've not had a good start to the year. Norgeland still dead last. Orborg are pulling it back a little bit, but Midgeland are struggling too. Lingby down there as well. It's a very different looking championship group, featuring Randers and, of course, newly promoted Vela. Obviously, that could all change, though. We actually got £2.67 million just for playing in the UEFA Super Cup. So that was pretty nice. Just a little bit of extra money for the board to, no doubt, funnel out through the back door. Now, we have had some bids and stuff for players. For example, Palace came in with a huge bid uh, for Ashley Marins, which was over £6 million. And my eyes lit up when I saw that. Uh, I thought we had more time to negotiate the bids. So we had the deal agreed, but it fell through because their transfer window closed in, like, early August because of the new way the transfer window works in the Premier League, which frustrated the hell out of me because we nearly got six and a half million uh, for Ashley Marinus, which would have been an absolute bargain um, for us anyway, um, because he's a player that I'm a bit, I was a bit concerned about in the analysis video. And to get six and a half million pounds for him would have been absolutely sensational. The board did then try to sell Marinus to Lazio out from underneath me for actually a reasonable price of around about six million. The problem was the clauses were shocking. It was things like us paying half of his wages and stuff like that, which is not going to happen. Uh, thankfully, they would let me protest and I was able to actually convince them not to sell him. Me too. 
Svend Bond nil. First of which is Martin Furyk coming in uh, from Maladia Boleslav. Uh, just 250k. I saw him and I thought, you know what, let's just pick up another one of these strikers. Um, he's got decent stats in some areas. He's 16 years old. He can improve a lot. He's gone out on loan to Hobro for a bit as well. Uh, we also have this guy. This is Joel Lucio, who comes in for about 50k, I think, uh, from Porto Menens, who's also gone out on loan uh, to Hobro. We're clearly tapping us up for some players at the moment. But again, for 50k, I couldn't really say no. He's already worth more than that now. And of course, remember, there's Halil Ibrahim Sari, who we signed last season, um, who has come in and has left to go out to Lingby, but it's a fee-paying loan, which is going to get us a minimum of £600,000 if he plays. And if he doesn't, it could rise to over a million pounds. Lingby will be paying us for the season to have this guy on loan, which is an amazing deal, frankly. And it gets him first team football in the top flight. And I also sold Mamadou Niang to FC Copenhagen for £1.3 million pounds, uh, because we could, basically. And I figured if I was going to sell him to anyone, I would want it to be another Danish side to keep the league strong. And they came in, put a bid, and I thought, you know what? Let's have this. They did also put a really large bid in for another one of our players, but I literally cannot remember who it was. And then he signed a new contract because I'd offered him one, uh, and then that cancelled the deal, which was a bit stupid of me, but I'd done that before they put the bid in. I can't remember who it was. It was Aldo Safi. They wanted to pay us £4 million for Aldo Safi, and I was prepared to let them. Uh, but then the new contract thing that he'd complained about came through and it cancelled the deal, which is a bit of a shame, but there you go. In amongst all that, there's lots and lots more loans as well, as you can see, because I think we got to hear last time. Terzieff's gone, Harris has gone, Muller, Jakobsen, Estevez, Ayoadi, Mbega, El Ash has gone out on a fee-paying loan, um, which is nice to see. Skred has gone out, Pedersen, Klaassen, Fullerton uh, has gone out on loan to Hopper this time, not back to Jamaica. Helilovic has gone out on loan. Uh, Svensson, Lucio, Florito, Pavek, Sorensen, Micic, Tura, Ryan, R Tura? Tonya, Ryan Rook again, this time to Randers as well. Furik and Pasinda uh, have all gone out on loan as well, so we're getting a lot of strength to the other teams in this league to help develop our players too um, which is going to be brilliant because a lot of them won't be able to play against us in the league so that should help us there too we did have a lot of bids also for um Yanishinsky from the likes of manchester city and arsenal um, they never went more than about six seven million pounds but this is for a player who doesn't really even get in our b team a lot of the time so there's definitely something there and we might have to take a look at that a bit deeper Sorgord also got into the Danish national team squad for a proper friendly. He didn't actually play, but he's right on the precipices of the team now. And also, last but not least, Clayton. I went back in for him just on a whim to see what had happened, and I noticed that they had a brand new release clause in his contract that I didn't notice before. So a foreign club can put in a bid of 16 million, and it will count as trigger his release clause so i've tried it and he will actually talk to us he wants moon money but if we could get the money together to pay the 16 million quid do you think that we should go for this obviously we can't do it now um but if we could somehow get the money together to go after clayton uh, by hook or by crook do you think we should try and sign him it would cost us 16 million pounds he'd be our record signing but do you think it's a good idea he'd want about 38 grand a week uh which is a lot of money i grant you but do you think that's worth do you think it's worth it let me know in the comments Right, that's enough of that. Uh, it's Anderlecht today. I can't remember who the second game of this episode is going to be against. It's about against Leipzig away, so there you go. Um, I'm looking forward to this. This is a crucial game, though. At home against Anderlecht, um, this is probably the most winnable game in the group. We need to get off to a good start here. It's super important. They've got a lot of injuries as well, which could help us too. Uh, we're massive favourites for this game. We need to go out here and get a solid win, get some points on the board. So, of course, we're going to go first string. We actually played this for the game against Midland and it worked fairly well. So, uh, first string, but we're going to switch it to opposition report so we can see what kind of system they're going to play. Oh, Lord. What is it with Belgian teams and playing this style of football? I swear that when we played against Genk, they did something like this a few years ago. Um, so... It's basically a case of stick to what we're doing and utilize the wingbacks to full effect since they're going to have no real competition down the side and should just be able to push these guys back. That's the plan anyway. So we're going to go with Bravo, Svenningsen, Akinola, uh, Sugo. Why am I saying his name weirdly? Sugo, um, Jankowski, Cunha, and as Abdel Sattar, he's not quite back fit yet. So we might have to go with Rogers Jr. in there as Marinus is injured. Uh, or is he suspended? I think he might be suspended. Angel Simovic and Santos. Santos is still not fully ready, but that doesn't matter because we've got Barbello and Miranda in goal. It's a pretty strong lineup, I have to say. On the bench, Amoa, Safi, Stan, uh, Kuja, Santos, Santos, and Yakim. Also, about El Hazazi, we actually had a bid of seven and a half million pounds for him from Feyenoord. So again, he could be really something. So I was nearly going to send him out alone, but then I didn't. Also, thank you guys for getting in touch about the nicknames. I think the most popular one was to abbreviate all his initials, and that comes out to Raleigh. Uh, so we're going to call him Raleigh uh, from now on, because that's easier to say than Raleigh. Just going to go straight up with Raleigh. It's much easier, and we can remember his name much easier than that. Something I totally forgot to mention in my notes, god damn it, they've changed the tactic, is that Maurizio, who had the poor determination, uh, having been tutored by Ward Prowse for uh, well, not even that long, has gone from 5 to 12 on determination, which is much, much better. So that should really help him in his career with us, hopefully. Now we just need to sort out his personality. So, question of the day. And today's question is a weird one. What do you think about the idea of a Greenland national team? Now, 
I know they've got one, but obviously it's not endorsed by FIFA because technically Greenland is a constituent autonomous territory within Dem I don't know. Everything I know about Danish politics comes from watching season one of Borgen, um, which is where I'm at at the moment, so no spoilers. Um, so I don't really have much of an opinion on that one, but it'd be cool if they did, frankly. I know they might be a member of, what's it called, Conifer or something, the unofficial uh, one. Bravo! Over the crossbar straight away there. Over then again, it has taken us 10 minutes to get that shot in. We need to do better than that. But yeah, what do you guys think about the, the Greenland national team idea? I think it'd be cool. If nothing else, any idea? If you've got any ideas for a question today, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Um, we are 22 minutes into this game and nout has happened. We've had one opportunity so far. Um, this is displeasing. I mean, even if we have to somehow win this game like 1-0 or something, I would take it. But as long as we win the match, that's all that matters is getting the win on the night. Um, three points, start of the Champions League. This is the easiest game we're going to have this season uh, in Europe. It's as simple as that. Leila Iseka coming forward. And that's a poor shot from him from range. We're going to have to improve today. Cunha probably won't win that. No, he hasn't. Ogrinitz into the channel. He's got round both of them nearly. And he's got a ball in. Okanse. Oh, good God. We're 1-0 down at home to Anderlecht. Eric Okanse has scored the goal after 26 minutes. And, I mean, neither team have really created much. We've created a tiny bit. But they've got the lead here. This is a terrible start to the Champions League. If we lose at home to Anderlecht, the weakest team in the group, then... Great work from Akansi. Lovely touch inside, and Miranda's not getting to that. It's 1 0 here in. Come on, we've got. We're at home as well. Right. We're going to look for the overlap, and we're going to close down the goalkeeper and, yeah, just try to be a bit more aggressive. Like, oh, actually, maybe we should be more aggressive. Maybe we should get stuck in. Don't really like this tactic, but we might try it out for the rest of this game. Really try and force our way into this match. Akansi, right. Breakaway time, hopefully. And hell, here we go. Akinola. He's got. I think that's Bravo ahead. Yeah. Svenningson is bombing down the wing. Um. Oh, no. Akinola. Can he find someone? He's found Jonas Svenningson. Over the crossbar. We should be level in this match now. We're starting to get a bit more back into the game, though, and that's what I like to see. Um, but we need to do better than this. Since we have switched to the other tactic, we've created a lot more just in the last sort of five or six minutes since they scored, frankly. Simovic, Jankowski, Akinola, Svenningsen, Alwife Rogers Jr., ball back post. Svenningsen! It's in the back of the net. There you go. There's your man, Jonas Svenningsen, 1 1 here in Greenland. I didn't want to have a poor result against someone like Anderlecht at home. Not with our home record. I think, what is it? We've only lost one game in Europe ever. Um, at home. And that was the home game against Inter Milan. Svenningsen starts the move. First time ball in as well. And a wonderful header from Svenningsen. Goalkeeper should be doing better. Doesn't matter. It's one all. Good stuff. Uh, I'm going to encourage them. We just need to do more of what we've done so far in this match. Oh my, oh my god. Eric Akansi makes it 2-1 to Anderlecht. I'm losing the will to live here, guys. Come on, we're better, def we're better than this defensively. It's just a ball lumped into the box. Nobody tracks the run. And it's a simple goal for Akansi. And we're going to have to come from behind again here. This is mental. How are we losing this game? Jankowski's ball in. Simovic. And it's now a penalty to B67. That'll be Jonas Svenningsen again, won't it? Wait. Yeah, it is Svenningsen. He's got a decent record with penalties lately. I will grant him. So hopefully he can do it again tonight. Svenningsen's strike. There it is. It's 2 all here in Greenland. Um, this has been a weird game, right? I can see does need to be marked out the game. What a weird first half. 2 all here. Svenningsen's grabbed himself a pair of goals in the Champions League already to celebrate uh, still being at the club. Right, let's move on from this now. Cunha. Jankowski again. Dinks one for Akinola, and that's round the post as well. Come on, guys, stop shooting from range. Well, that's half time. Two all. Um, what a weird old first half. I think we've created enough to have the two goals, but the fact that we've let them score twice is a shocking piece of play from us. We need to carry on like this in the second half and just finish them off. Get it four or five two or something, or just three two, frankly. Another chance. Akinola's corner. It's going to the edge of the box for somebody. Svenningsen's header. Oh my god. Akinola again. Ball in. Nope. Caught by the goalkeeper this time. The pressure is just going to keep going for the rest of this game. We just need to find one goal. That's all we need. Cunha, can he find one of his trademark crosses? Ball in. Cunha just... Oh, it's another penalty. Right. The penalty, the second penalty in games is almost always missed, I've found. Um, I don't know why, but it does seem to be the case on FM that the second penalty you get is almost always missed. My God, he scored another one. Hey, I'll take that back. Jonas Fenningson with the hat trick. It's 3-2 to B67. Two penalties given away on the night by Anderlecht. If they hadn't have done that, there's a real chance they possibly could have won this game at the moment. Uh, right. I'm actually going to get Stan in for Akinola uh, for the remainder of this game to give him a little run out. Cunha. Edge of the box of Sorgord. Goes for Svenningsen. Kuja. Oh, and another chance goes begging. Somebody do something. Just Sorgord. Can he find a cross maybe? Or just finish the game? Rogers Jr. Jankowski. Stan. 
puts it around the post and that should be game set and match now for us it's been much more hard fought than it ever should have had any right to be right uh some games off camera come back with that in a minute for the second game of this episode against leipzig right so we had a few games off camera which we're going to go through now so first it was vela away in the league a fairly straightforward one with the reserve team um a couple of injuries in this one were a bit annoying war prowse and victor christensen the youngster both got injured bit of a shame yakim's goal bravo Got one off the bench, which was good. And Aldo Barbello had a bloody good game and another win for us. Next up, we had our cup match against our affiliate club, Freymad. And we absolutely smashed them. 5-0. Uh, full strength team out for this game, as you would imagine. Goal for Svenningsen, two for Sani Akinola, one for Peter Sorgo, and one for Mariano Bravo. All in a relatively short space of time. But it was a fairly competent uh, performance overall. And a thumping win as puts us through to the next round where we'll play a team from an even lower division. And finally, in preparation for today's game, we rested a few players. But it didn't matter as we got a very, very comfortable home win over bottom of the table. Norgeland, oh how the mighty have fallen goals for Medi Kuja, Matthias Olsen whose cross went straight in and then one for Mark Yakim who was man of the match on the night as well gave us a comfortable 3-0 win to see us stay top Anyway, this is what we're really here for. Um, it's all in the balance. Paris Saint-Germain thumped Leipzig 6-2 uh, in their first game in the Champions League. So that bodes well for us, potentially. I, I think that it's a battle between us and Leipzig for that second place in the Champions League. Although, you never know what we can do against P PSG at home. Um, also, our youth team in the UEFA Youth League actually beat Leipzig 1-0 away from home in their game. So, hey, definitely some benefits there. I also just noticed that Patrick Vieira is actually managing Leipzig. So that's kind of interesting. Augustin actually started the last game. That's how desperate we were for players in that. One. Right, so first string, Bravo, Svenningsen, Akinola. We're not playing this tactic, Christ. Bravo, Svenningsen, Akinola, Sorgord, Jankowski, um, Satar. Actually, I'll tell you what, right? As much as we love Rog, Satar's rating this season is a 7.58 on average. He has really been very, very good for us this year, and maybe he deserves a run out today, frankly. So that's the lineup. This is just. Oh, actually, we, we should probably check out their system, shouldn't we? Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, ooh, Zinchenko's there too. So Burke Ozchan is probably the one we're going to mark up. Ooh, that's a different one. They've got their advanced playmaker. These four guys are going to be the key men, um, I think, basically. I don't know. If we can get out of here without losing, I'll be very, very pleased. I'm, I'm curious to see how we match up against someone like Leipzig. But even if we just got a tiny defeat that hopefully we can overthrow in the second game, uh, then that could certainly do us in good stead for getting that second spot in the group. I know I should be targeting more than that, but I really do think finishing above PSG is a bit above us. Okay, that's what we're going to go with. I am I honestly don't know what to think. This game could be anything. I really don't know where we match up against Leipzig, and this could be a good indication of where we could expect to finish in this group, basically, uh, based on how well we play tonight. I think if we can get out of here with a point, then second place in this group is a real likelihood, uh, particularly if we can go to Belgium and win against Anderlecht. That's going to be important because Leipzig still have to play there. If we lose narrowly, it's still going to be in the balance. But if we get absolutely humped, then that could cause some problems for us later down the line. And then again, they got absolutely humped by uh, Paris Saint-Germain. So it's not the end of the world, uh, I guess. Bayer. Back post. Great save from Joao Miranda. He's got our best pass completion uh, on the entire team, which is nice. He's obviously favouring the short passes rather than lumping it. Svenningsen up against two players. He's got Bravo in the box. Finds it again. Knocked down. Bravo! Oh my god, how did he keep that out? Svenningsen! <gasps> no! Oh, God, we should be in front here in Germany. Uh, the fact that we're not is desperately disappointing. Bravo had a tough chance, but that one for Svenningsen was an open goal, and that could have been his fourth goal in the Champions League this season. Zinchenko down to March. I tell you what, though, we've not got a lot of the ball, but we have looked sensational so far uh, going forward. Six shots in the first 10 minutes of this game and three really good chances. Egerstein, Lehmer over the crossbar for Leipzig. Whoa, this is getting interesting now. I would totally settle for nil-nil if we if we could get away with it. That would be a pretty good result for my money. Uh, Baylor, although oh, there's always a chance. If we could get the goal and actually come out here and win, that would be amazing for us, for our chances. March, right, got to do good for the defending here. And Hell does beautifully well. Find Svenningsen as well. Bravo's in behind. He's in. One touch. Can he finish? Yes! Leipzig nil, B67-1, Mariano Bravo, set up by Jonas Svenningsen. This would be the perfect opening pair of group games. And they're like with a massive struggle. Um, but today, we've actually been very, very good. Svenningsen just bides his time long enough to set Brother out. Great first touch from him to get himself in there and drills it near post. It's, well, if we could both be on six points after this game, that would be very, very good for us and PSG to wrap up this group early. But there's still a long way to go in this game. 1-0 at halftime. I couldn't have asked for a better first half from us, really. Uh, no no possession whatsoever, but we've created chances. We could have had two or maybe even three goals in this first half. Uh, Svenningsen should have scored. Bravo did. Doesn't matter. If we get the win, it will not matter. Actually, now screw it. So Sak Akinola is going to come off for Kreishi. And Satar, who's looking nervous as well, is going to come off there. Hmm. I, might, I might leave the rest for now. 
because everyone else actually I might replace both of our wingbacks. This seems to work quite well in European games uh, to give ourselves fresher players in there. So Sitar, so Rogers Jr. and Olsen are now on. Olsen's had a really good season for us so far. They're not as quite strong defensively, perhaps. Actually, Rogers Jr. is pretty good in the air. I've just noticed that they have their own Akinola uh, as well. So they're actually facing off against each other in the same position as well. 13 minutes away. I feel like if we win this 1-0, we would deserve it. Uh, we've created a lot of good chances and they haven't uh, really. And I feel like we would deserve the win if we were to get it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Lamer saved by Miranda. Back post. March! Round the post. That was their first big chance of the game, really. I, I think it's crazy that's got the 18 passing. Hopefully, we'll see some of that. Uh, Angel, that's lovely stuff. Just keeping the ball. Rogers Jr. Bravo. Options. One of them is Jonas Svenningsen. It's 2 0. Right. Blah, 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 blah. RB Leipzig 0. B67 2. Svenningsen and Bravo have interchanged goals and assists for today. And we are going to hopefully, anyway, with that now, win in Germany. This has been a thoroughly professional performance. Where was this against Anderlecht? Great work from Bravo to slide it through. Svenningsen's fourth goal in the Champions League already this season. Uh, we need to hang on to this guy. And Bravo with the assist as well. Brilliant stuff. Shots wise, the game's been fairly even. But in terms of actual the quality of chances, We've been vastly the better side in that area. Bravo. Takes it short for, uh, for Jankowski. Over the top of Svenningsen's in. That's surely offside. Yeah, that must be offside. And PSG are going to win 2-0 in Belgium as well, which is going to help us out massively. Uh, we're going to be in a really good position to come second in this group. Or battle out with PSG for the win, quite frankly. Uh, who's to say we can't do it? You never know. Rogers Jr. Maybe you can peel one up back post. Svenningsen, it's 3-0 here in Germany. What a performance this has been. This is what we needed against Anderlecht at home. But to get a 3-0 win away from home in European football is fantastic. Svenningsen's grabbed himself another uh, brace. Lovely cross as well from Rogers Jr. First time, oh no, second time. Whips it to the back post. Svenningsen's header. Five goals in two Champions League matches for him this season. What a start to the year for Jonas Svenningsen. And that's going to be it. I want that clean sheet and the 3-0 win in Europe would be fantastic. Uh, makes up for the, no! Oh, there we go. And that'll do it. That surely will do it. There we go. Red Bull Leipzig nil. B67-3. Jonas Svenningsen with a pair of goals. Brava with the other. What a performance. That's exactly what we needed right now. Just noticed that Sevilla beat Zenit 7-1. My lord. Svenningsen's only just on this one, obviously, because other teams will have played more games. But that is looking really, really coasty for us right now. Us and PSG with six points each. Goal differences are plenty as well. It's a battle between us and PSG for top spot, really. And whoever doesn't get it will get that second spot. I can't see us uh, losing to Leipzig at home we've got to go and win in belgium though and win at home get the 12 points there and see what we can do against psg and next episode is going to be the key match basically two games against paris Saint germain home and away those games really will decide whether we're going to come second or first in this group i feel because i feel like we're good enough to win both of the uh fifth and sixth games it's the next two that are going to be the key ones for us so if you have enjoyed this episode and i really hope you have look at this amount of green here barely any goals conceded in that patch either and like did the best against us to be fair uh then yeah drop a like on the video it really really helps the channel out you have no idea and if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button for more videos like this every single tuesday thursday and sunday and i will join you guys in the next episode for the double header against paris Saint germain that decides where we finish i really really want to try and top the group because you never know what we could do in the next round i want to get past the first knockout round this season. See you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.